Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. Well the rain, she's a coming. Uh, it's late April 2023 and it looks like we're about to get a week's worth of rain. Uh, thank goodness I got block one here mowed and ready for harvesting. Um, when we're going to do that is another question because um, we might wait till there's a bit more nut on the ground. But I thought I'd start this video with a quick visit back to Stupid, our macadamia tree. Um, if you're following the channel, there have been a few mentions of this tree trying to flower completely the wrong time of year. Some of those flowers have turned into nuts. You can see them in front of me now up on the tree there. They're baby nuts that are coming at the wrong time of the year and you might get excited and say, well, maybe the tree isn't being stupid after all. But when you look on the ground, what you can see is that most of these nuts are being shed. And that's because the weather's getting colder and the tree is just unfortunately aborting them but not to be outdone stupid is still even now putting out new flowers you can see one in there and uh, what it's going to do with them in mid-autumn i have no idea but you know look it's not a good sign the tree's putting its energy into creating a crop that will never work and um, those nuts will probably just end up shedded on the ground like those ones. But that's the latest from Stupid. Um, on with the rest of our show. Now this tree here is currently the biggest of the trees I have planted from uh, nursery stage um, here at Nutkin Farm. This one's a 788, a very vigorous grower. It's now, I would say, double my height, so it's a good 12 feet high and flushing nicely. It's now really, you wouldn't call it a sapling anymore. It's well and truly a growing tree. Hasn't um, flowered or fruited yet, but you'd expect that in perhaps the next season. It's doing well. Uh, many of the other trees I planted at the same time are also doing well. Um, some 246s and 835s uh, are doing quite well too and, and many of them are now over my head and so I'm going to look back now and have a bit of an analysis on what I've fed these trees how I've got them to grow this fast uh, or this well um, in some cases and to have a bit of a think about what worked best out of the various options that I tried so I'm back at the farmhouse now and um, by the look of this rain I'm glad I got some fertiliser out when I had the chance because just before rain is a beautiful time to feed. Um, no fertiliser works without moisture and um, in autumn you know, the young trees like every other tree tries to put on a flush of growth as conditions for growing are, are really quite good. So what to feed these babies? Well, let's start with the expert advice rather than what I'll advise you um, because the experts have been hard at work lately. The New South Wales Department of Primary Industries has just released um, one module of an overall guide to macadamia growing. And the very first module they released at the end of 2022 was one on soil health and macadamia tree nutrition. Now, if you look at that guide, which is available all over the world and it's free um, and very high quality, I suggest you look at it. Um, it does have a section on what to feed young macadamia trees. Now, it's advocating feeding them often, as in every two months, with a small handful, 50 grams, of a compound chemical fertiliser with all the main nutrition in it, but in particular, needs to be high in nitrogen and potassium. The potassium bit surprised me because that, to me, was largely the element for flowering and fruiting, but it's also very important in the growth of young macadamia trees, as it turns out. Um, so hold that thought for a sec. But that was their recommendation. They, they did also acknowledge that some people like to feed organically with a, a chicken manure product, and they said that's okay as well again, sort of once every um, eight weeks to two months. Um, now, 
how does that compare with earlier guides? Well, the Queensland guide only mentions chemical feeding and the earlier New South Wales guide only mentioned chemical feeding. But the chemical feed really is still the primary recommendation in the 2022 guide. So um, I've tried using chemical feeding once um, and didn't get really a very noticeable result from it. It was during a fairly wet period and I you know, was wondering whether some of that fertiliser might just have washed away rather than get to the plant roots. But let me show you the various things I've been feeding my babies. Now, there is a chemical fertiliser. Um, this one's called Rustica Plus. It's very high in nitrogen and potassium. Um, not so much phosphorus, but that's good. Bits of calcium, bits of boron and zinc, useful amounts of those trace elements. And it's a, a pretty well-rounded compound chemical fertiliser. It's about as, as good as it gets in terms of what I've seen in the marketplace. Um, it didn't used to be overly expensive, of course, till the Ukraine war happened, but, uh, you know, it can be a bit expensive now. So that's what the experts in the government departments will tell you to use. Over here, I've got Organic Life, which is a fortified chicken manure product. Now, what you can see immediately here is that the amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are all much lower than the chemical food. However, in general, you use a lot more. You'd use more than um, more than a sort of 50 grams anyway. I tend to use a double handful of these for each baby tree. Um, and you can almost equate the same level of nutrients. Lots of trace elements in this. But I should stress... I've never used a pure chicken manure pellet um, simply because they're not strong enough on potassium. And this potassium in this fortified product and also the others that I've used comes from potassium sulfate, sometimes called sulfate of potash, that is added manually to the pellet. And there's other things in here along with seaweed, blood and bone, uh, zeolite for soil softening, all sorts of good things. And... and um, I'm a fan of this kind of fortified chicken manure simply because it is more balanced on the potassium side and I think uh, you get a better result from it. Now thirdly, and out of the box, um, Osmocote. Now in some countries you won't know what Osmocote is, it is available in the US and a couple of other countries. Osmocote is a resin ball. Um, that resin ball breaks down with water over time. What happens is rain will soak into the outside of the resin ball and when the water comes out, it leaches a tiny part of its fertiliser into the soil at that point. And the commercial forms of Osmocote, like Osmocote Exact, have a rating. This is 12 to 14 months. And so it will continue leaching its nutrients for 12 to 14 months after you put it down. And then you can stack it up against the tree root. It's very, very slow release. Now, huge amount of nutrients. You can see there, 15% nitrogen, 11% potassium. Good on trace elements, Osmocote Exact. The other ones, less so. Um, I picked this one specifically because, you know, it says 12 to 14 months, but in our climate here, with a lot of rain and a lot of heat, you wouldn't expect it to last quite that long. I don't need it to, though, because for regular feeding, I'm putting it down every few months. Um, but that is what I'm using in the field. Now, nursery people use this when they're raising the plants, and when you get them from a the nurseryman, you'll see little, little beads in the potting mix. Um, but... Very few people I know use them use Osmocote actually in the field to, to help with the early growth of the trees. And does it work? Well, I suppose you could listen to me saying that it does work or I could show you myself. So the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Let's go have a look and I'll show you some results from my experimentation. Now, here we are in my MCT1 trial block at the top of block six on my farm. And these MCT1s um, <clears throat> are in a mixed condition. A couple of them were beaten over by cows, as you saw in a previous episode. But a couple of the trees that have been here since scratch are now over my head. They're doing rather well. 
and I've been feeding this block with um, lime impact or you know if not lime impact another pelletized chook manure product just putting them around one of the benefits of the pelletized products is you can put them up reasonably close to the base of the tree and it's not going to cause too much um, trouble now a good time to measure these trees is in the autumn flush and that's when you're meant to see a bit of new growth that is light green like this particular branch and it's got some new growth on it's not overly dramatic um, the growth that is happening is reasonably solid stuff and um, I'm not at all unhappy with the progress it's just I guess you know a little bit patchy and a little bit different when you go from tree to tree you do see some trees you know sometimes doing a little bit better than others but there is some autumn flush and you can sort of compare that and um, over here I'll show you my real rock star MCT1 tree because at the tender age of two years it's managed to make a nut for me actually there were more than one of these but uh, yep there is an MCT1 nut my very first and that's two years after planting pretty much so now it's time to go have a look and see what the macadamia variety R's are doing and they've been fed on Osmocote. Okay, this is something where Osmocote's a product that all, everyone uses in the nursery. All the nursery trees are given to you and you can see Osmocote little beads in the bottom um, and that's how the nurserymen then get them ready for you. But once in the field, very few if any farmers are using Osmocote actually in the ground where these trees are planted but have a look at what's happening to my ones there's the osmocote i've just recently reapplied some but its last dose of food was also osmocote look at this flush it is absolutely beautiful and it's repeated too pretty much all over this block now um, I've had a couple of fatalities in these trees. You wouldn't put it down to feeding necessarily. But the flush that is growing up from these little trees is really well above average. It's most impressive. And these trees have been fed for the last six months only on Osmocote. They did have some pelletized food when planting and that was last spring so they may still be getting the benefit of that and in in other ways it's not a direct comparison because uh you know these are younger trees than the mct ones and perhaps you might expect younger trees to flush more when they're just babies and and they're growing but here you know here's a great example of a tree that wasn't doing all that great in the summer heat um but it's had now two feeds of Osmocote and look at that new growth. Now this flush, this light green growth hardens off and that is it becomes darker green and the, the leaves become harder um, as the tree matures. But in general I'd have to say the performance with Osmocote is proof enough for me that it works. And in the wet season, we're about to get a week of rain, I know that this food will not simply dissolve away. It won't be fast release like a compound fertilizer. It's going to hang around. It can deal with heavy rain because it doesn't generally wash away. At least that's what I find. And it will release nutrients slowly over the wet period in autumn. And so you know that, you know, when you're not here or, you know, you don't necessarily have to do it every two months, um, a little handful of this around the base of the trees will, you know, potentially give us um, some continuous slow release feeding, yeah, which is the aim of doing it every two months in the first place. When the DPI tells you give the, give the trees food every two months, what they're really saying is they want a little bit of food regularly they don't want huge overdoses of at least chemical fertilizer because you can kill a tree with that and it's, it's just not good for it even if the tree does survive. 
Um, I am going to do some other experimentation though to try and sort of match apples more with apples. So for example, these trees up the top of block eight, I've been feeding pelletized chook to. That's about as much as I put on in a dose. Um, and hopefully that tree will show some signs. It's getting some good new flush as well. That was on Osmocote, but I've converted it over to pelletized chook to see what uh, to see what the difference will be. Now I'm not at the moment going to use the chemical fertilizers I've got in the shed. Uh, you know I've I've done that before on block one. Didn't see a particularly impressive result with it. So my two main choices at the moment are either a pelletized chicken product or Osmocote. But at least on my early findings. Um, a good version of Osmocote, and again, not the kind you find in Bunnings, um, is a really good idea, I think, in a particular climate where soils leach easily um, and uh, you know, heavy rainfall can absolutely you know, ruin the benefit or ruin the continuing benefit of other kinds of fertiliser. So that's the benefit of my experimentation, guys. You won't find that in any book. Um, no one's recommending Osmocote for baby trees in the ground. But um, if, uh, if you want to have a go, anyone else wants to experiment with it and report back on what their results are, absolutely love to hear from you. Right, time to do some work. I'm off and uh, hopefully you're having a lovely day, whatever it is you're doing. Catch you soon.